This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. How do we assess the depth of the groove when we make sculpting? Are we too deep? Are we too superficial? Let's try to delve into this topic as I'm going to demonstrate the classical divide and conquer four quadrant technique where I'll be sculpting and creating four grooves in this slightly denser cataract. So this is a 70-year-old gentleman who has this brown cataract. He's scheduled for toric intraocular lens. The markings are done, the incisions are being created and the capsule is stained and the eye is pressurized with OVD. So while making the incision, usually I prefer to turn the globe away from me just a bit so that I get enough corneal uh, tunnel as I make the uh, perforation into the Desmond's membrane and into the antechamber. So this gives me adequate amount of tunnel effect. Now as this is a slightly denser cataract, I want the rexes to be at least around 5 mm or 5.5 mm. That's the strategy which I'm going to use. The rexes is done now. A very gentle hydrodissection to ensure that the, the capsule bag is free from its attachment to the cortex in the lens matter. Very little amount of fluid is used. The nucleus is tapped down. The nucleus rotation is confirmed and now is the time to proceed with fake emulsification. So as is customary, I begin by using the epinucleus mode wherein you can see the power is set very low and we're just going to aspirate the superficial epinucleus in the cortex. A time to begin the sculpting. Uh, the settings which I'm going to use is a 90% torsional power which helps me to cut the uh, lens very effectively. And watch how my left hand is stabilizing the nucleus. The left hand has a chopper and it is just pressing down on the nucleus just to ensure that the nucleus is stable and not mobile. As I deepen the groove, the pressure is progressively increased. Nucleus rotated and the sculpting in the quadrant 90 degrees to the original groove is being continued. Once the depth of this new groove reaches that of the old groove, the nucleus is rotated and the original groove, its distilled part is being deepened now. The last groove of the plus sign is now being created. I've exposed the tip slightly longer so that I get better cutting efficiency and also the reach is longer without getting obstructed by the sleeve. So that's one idea of using a slightly longer exposed tip. The grooves are progressively deepened. And at this stage in the groove, as I'm growing, you can see that there are horizontal striations of the lens fiber which are very much visible. So at this point, yeah, let me pause here. And once I grow deeper than this, the color of the lens which is undergoing sculpting suddenly changes. And the nucleus is rotated, the grooving is done. And again, as the sculpting becomes deeper and deeper, we can see that the color changes. And we reach a point wherein the horizontal striations of the lens fiber, they just disappear. So you don't see those horizontal striations and just uh, the color becomes a little bit darker. And this would suggest that we are at almost 90% depth now. So the sculpting is continued. And again, as it's going deeper and deeper, the yellowish tinge disappears and we have underlying gray or black areas almost visible. The horizontal striations of the lens fibers have all disappeared now. Well, this is an indirect sign which says that probably we have gone beyond 85 to 90 percent of the lens thickness. So this would be the time probably to stop and then attempt the cracking. And as I feel that all of them have reached equal depth, now is the time for lateral separation. The chopper and the tip both are kept deep into the groove and the lateral separation maneuver is done. 
Now, because the posterior plate has been so much thinned down now, the lateral separation maneuver is very easy and we can fracture the nucleus into four fragments quite effortlessly. Point to note also is that this cataract is not really so dense. It's about grade 4. It's not the other cataracts which I have been showing it to you, maybe grade 5 and grade 6. That may be the reason why this is relatively easy to separate. So each of the fragments need to be emulsified now. So one of the fragments is pulled out of the bag and then being emulsified. Uh, the epinucleus which is left there also I just pull it out and emulsify. So at this point I just want to come out put in some OVD again to ensure that the endothelium does not bear the brunt of the nucleus management. So the dispersive OVD goes in first followed by HPMC underneath it. And of course I can emulsify all these fragments without replenishing the OVD back but in such cases, such scenarios, eventually the endothelium takes it all. So it is just a matter of few more minutes and I feel it's definitely worthwhile to slow it down a little bit, push in OVD and that will definitely help us to safeguard the endothelium. Second fragment is being pulled out of the bag and then emulsified. Again here, I'm using continuous torsional energy and uh, uh, the torsional energy is, has a great uh, ability to cut the tissue so we can emulsify the hardest of the cataracts with great ease. The only challenge is to control the turbulence. Sometimes it's so efficient that you end up having the smaller fragments fluttering all around that can cause endothelial damage. Third fragment that I'm emulsifying, you can see that my left hand having the Sinskuke is just above the fragment and uh, the keep a note on the FACO power. I'm not using the entire power which is available to me. I'm using just a little bit so that it takes a longer time to emulsify but it's much more controlled. Uh, the fragment is just dancing around the tip and as eventually it reduces in size and ultimately disappears. And at all the time you can see that the left hand having the chopper was just above the nuclear fragment. So controlling the energy delivery with your foot ensures that the turbulence or the lens chatter can be prevented. See, these fragments can be emulsified in just a couple of seconds itself. The only idea of going slow is to ensure that we minimize the lens chatter. Again, watch the position of my Sinski hook which is on top of the fragment. And again, monitor the power which I'm going to use in the left hand quadrant. So although my available power peak is set at 60, I'm just using 20 just to ensure that I'm having a better control over the proceedings and slowly but surely the nuclear fragment just dances around the phaco tip and eventually gets emulsified. So little bit of patience ensures great outcome as far as the first day post-op corneal clarity is concerned. Finally all the fragments are emulsified. We have got a, just a little bit of an epinucleus and cortex remaining. A small epinuclear fragment which is floating around is burped out by using BSS. By burping out, I mean that when you're injecting BSS into the eye, I press down on the posterior lip. This ensures that the, uh, the loose lens matter just flows out along with the BSS which is flowing out because I've opened the tunnel by pressing the uh, floor of the tunnel down. So time to aspirate the cortex. During cortex aspiration, when an experienced surgeon is doing, the process is quite quick. You know, you just see everything being pulled and aspirated. So when I observe many of the beginner surgeons who come for training, I feel that they struggle quite a lot as far as the cortical aspiration is concerned. So for them, my recommendation would be to divide the cortex aspiration into three parts. Engage, strip and then aspirate. So by this, you are preventing yourself on aspirating near the capsular fornaces, which can increase the chances of PC tear. So remember, engage, strip and then aspirate. Aspiration needs to be done in the central safe zone. This is a dictum which I would recommend when in your early learning phase. Time to implant the lens. So OVD is placed into the bag and the lens is loaded and then implanted into the bag. Of course, one can uh, use a hydro implantation as well. And there's a common misconception or myth that for doing toric IOLs, you have to use only hydro implantation. It's not mandatory. 
So you can always go ahead and remove all the OBD from behind the lens before aligning the lens properly. If you're doing hydrogen implantation, fair enough. But in a situation where you're not comfortable using hydrogen implantation, then using a viscoelastic is quite safe and it's not very difficult to remove the OBD from behind the lens. So lens is finally aligned into the preferred axis. That's it, the case is done. So in this case, we try to demonstrate how to assess the depth of the groove when, which we make when you're sculpting. In dense cataracts, this is very much appreciable. We are able to visualize the horizontal striations of the lens as the sculpting is going deeper and deeper. At one stage, the striations just disappear and also the color, which is usually a yellow or white, the color suddenly changes. It becomes much more darker, grayer, and that is evident that we have crossed 90% of the depth of the nucleus. The classical saying that, you know, watch out for the red glow in many of the denser cataracts, you don't see the red glow at all. So you need to rely on these signs when you're dealing with very dense brown cataract. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.